So in this season of Advent, we're obviously preparing for Christmas. Um, we have a community member here who's somewhat addicted to Christmas. If you sit still for long enough, you're going to find yourself with tinsel wrapped around some part of you. Um, every now and again, we come down to the living room or walk down the corridor and tinsel or hollies after finding its way around some picture or image or just a place is getting more uh, tinselified as each day passes. And this particular brother asked me, he said, do you ever, I, I live, so there's, there's the chapel here and then there's the house that all the young people, most young people live in is just adjoining the, the, the chapel here. Uh, but I live in a wee, hat, a wee house up in the hill there. So he asked me if I ever decorated my hermitage is called, if I ever decorated my hermitage for Christmas. And I said, no, never. Why would I? It's just me. I'm not going to sit there like, be Christmas to me, be Christmas. Like, it's just, you know. So, so I'm, and it just kind of, and it just kind of struck me, I am a small bit bad humbug when it comes to, when it comes to Christmas. And I was thinking about it today. Why is that? Uh, I guess, uh, for me, you see, the whole shopping thing and uh, Santi, all that kind of stuff, uh, I just I have no time for it, if I'm honest. <laughs> no time for that side of Christmas. Um, I don't like Christmas being reduced to uh, just a nice time for the community and a nice time for the family, because you can have a nice time for the community and the family at an All-Ireland final. Um, do you know, the family gathers together and watches the match and has a few drinks together, and there we go. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, Christmas is way beyond that. We can gather for any event, um, an anniversary, a housewarming, whatever. Um, but Christmas, is, Christmas isn't just that. Uh, that's a completely secular view of Christmas, which uh, we as, as, as Catholics, as Christians, should be well beyond. I mean, that's, the Lord didn't come, become incarnate in a crib so we could have an excuse to eat turkey. Like, it's, do you know what I mean? Like it's, so, um, so our reading today... Is, is trying to make a, a fairly straightforward point. Okay, so Yahweh, God asks uh, the prophet Isaiah, to whom could you liken me and who could be my equal, says the Holy One. Lift your eyes and look, who made these stars? Last night, like over around the place here, there was, it was a clear night and the stars were absolutely magnificent at about half ten last night when I was going up to my home. It was just absolutely beautiful out there. Okay, so this whole reading is making one very simple point. Jesus is Lord, or God is God of all creation. All right, everything that exists has been brought into existence by him. The prophet Isaiah, uh, 8th, 7th century BC, was planned by God to write these messages that we would then read in, what, 2,800 years later, right? All these things are ordained by God. God then has planned that at a certain point in history, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus, will become man and die on a cross and therefore open the gates to heaven for all of us. And this mystery, be, well, I don't want to say begins in the crib, it begins in some way in the crib. It becomes visible in the crib. Uh, so what's going on here Like, is this magnificent, divinely orchestrated plan for salvation to get us into heaven for all eternity. In order to have a relationship with God, we have to have an encounter with him. So, like, that you meet him, you know, that you, something, something sparks off a kind of a, 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 a friendship, uh, a knowledge of his heart, a knowledge of his desire for you, his love for you, his plan for you. Something kicks that off. It might be a pilgrimage, it might be a conversation with a person, it might be a prayer group, uh, it might even be the cross. It might be something that because of a sickness or an illness or a bereavement, we start praying like we've never prayed before. And that then deepens our faith. Because we've just simply got to live this reality here that Jesus is Lord of all. And if the focus uses, uh, it's, 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 a very, it's a very good line. If Jesus isn't Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. Jesus, you know, you can take care of the whole, the spiritual things. So the little bit of time I give you in my prayer life, that's yours. You can take care of that. Um, my health, my finances, I'll take care of those. Um, my plans for my future, my career, that's all my business, if you don't mind. If you just kind of just scoot out of the way there, I'll take care of all of that. You know, 
If Jesus isn't Lord of all, then he's not actually Lord at all. In your life, he's not actually Lord at all. You've given him a small little section, which maybe in your own head is actually a fairly insignificant part of your life, which is your prayer life, small little Sunday morning corner. And the rest of it, it's actually all you. So if Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And, and this, is, this, is like, this is so much more than uh, the minimalist version of faith, <clears throat> maybe that we've been encouraged to develop, and maybe even patted on the back for having. You know, <clears throat> We go to Mass once a week, pray the occasional rosary, and head out on a pilgrimage once a year, Medjugorje, Fatima, or Lourdes, uh, every summer, uh, one or the other, one, one, of the, one of the above, not all. That would be exaggerating. Uh, but like, and we think, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the epitome of sanctity. No, not even close. Not even close. If Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. So it has much more to do with the, the ordinary things of life, how I live the ordinary experiences of life. Uh, the last couple of days now, maybe you noticed, what day is today? Wednesday. Monday, um, we tried out our new webcam, right? Uh, which is a, it gives a lovely, lovely picture. Um, it's just, and you can, we can zoom into anything in the chapel, which is really, really nice. Um, and I've been working on that for about, I don't know, two, two weeks now, I think, learning an awful lot about cameras and I, internet and cables and all of this kind of thing. And it's driving me crazy because it's not actually working yet. And I hope to get it fixed today. But like, even in that, I can say, Lord, I know the internet didn't exist in your time. I've been speaking to technicians and they don't know what's going on. And I'm trying my best to work it out and I'm Googling like crazy. And I know you know more than Google. So Lord, whenever you're ready, you get it sorted. Why? Because Jesus is Lord of all. I mean, if he's going to be Lord of all, then he's Lord of all. Everything. Even things that didn't exist in his time. Because he's God. You know, to give him everything. To give him everything. And this is, this is difficult. This is difficult. In my life, is Jesus Lord of all or not? This gospel today, Jesus sticks together things that should never stick. It's like he's sticking super glue to Vaseline. Like, it just, this shouldn't work, right? But... Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy for those who aren't farmers, and even for those who are, yokes haven't existed for a long time. The yoke was, if you had two oxen or bulls or horses, whatever it was, that, that were pulling the plow, the yoke was a big, heavy, kind of a, not exactly McDonald's U but something like that, that you'd put around the horses at the front of when they'd walk, this was what would take all the weight of the plough behind. So it's a heavy yoke for... for uh, and it's, it's uncomfortable. It's wood. Uh, it's rough. Dirty. So my yoke is easy. Why, is it, why does there have to be a yoke at all? But there deliberately is a yoke. My yoke is easy. It's part, it's kind of, it's part of life. Uh, learning... How to carry our crosses with faith. Learning in the darkness, in these difficult times, that Jesus is the Lord. That's actually necessary. He doesn't say, I will take away the yoke, follow me and everything will be great. He says, they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Jesus' words, right? Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden light. Lord, if you're Lord, why not just take away the burden altogether? You know, if you saw a little child bringing in the shop and carrying two two-liter containers of milk and he's dragging it, you'd just well, take the little burden off him, wouldn't you? Because you don't have this little child tripping over four liters of milk. Uh, but yet, maybe if the child was t- ten years of age, it's actually good for them. They have some responsibility that they, that they start to grow up. So this, this carrying our burden, it's, it's necessary. It's, it's part of our spiritual growth. And if not, we remain spiritual infants. So we can ask ourselves, as regards to different ask, well, maybe rather than ask ourselves, maybe let's skip to the conclusion, rather than ask ourselves, is Jesus Lord of different parts of our lives? We can just make the decision now to make Lord, to make him Lord of the different aspects of our lives. 
to Lord Jesus as regards my finances. You are Lord. I give these things to you. As regards my health, Jesus, you are Lord. I give my health to you and I trust you with it. Lord, as regards my future, which I have planned, I give those plans to you, for you are Lord for all of the plans that I've made for my career, my relationships, my future house, where I want to live and what I want to do. Lord, I give all of those plans to you, knowing that you are the fulfillment of all my desires and that what is good for me, you want as well. But Lord, you are Lord. So I entrust all of those things to you. Lord, as as regards my desires to have children, a family, as regards my desires to be fulfilled in whatever way my heart is stirred, Lord, I give those plans to you, for you are Lord in my life. As regards my prayer intentions for Dave de now in hospital, for all of our sick family members, Jesus, you are Lord, and you have not forgotten a single one of them. I trust you. You are Lord in my life. You are, I want you. I want to invite you to be Lord of their lives too. May we trust you with our health, our happiness, our future. Lord, for anyone who's burdened, for anyone who's suffering from addiction or depression, loneliness, sadness, for anyone who's been disappointed by life, for anyone filled with shame due to past errors and mistakes. Lord, you are God of all time, past, present and future. I give everything to you that you may be Lord of all of my life, even my mistakes. Lord, for any excessive reliance or desire for comfort in my life. Lord, for all avoidance of sacrifice, anything that might be uncomfortable or inconvenient, especially the things that you're calling me to. Lord, you are God. And if I have you, I have everything I need. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Be Lord of my time off. Be Lord of my leisure. Lord Jesus, may each one of us experience every day in our lives the words that you give to the evangelist Matthew. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Amen.